Hello everyone. Welcome to Ask an Attorney on Fridays. Um, looks like we may be in for some stormy weather here in Houston this week. And so everybody just stay safe and hopefully we don't have any major weather this weekend. Um, it's that time of the year though. Everybody keep watch on that. The, the tropics and all the storms that are brewing. I know we have another one that's out in the Atlantic right now. Plus this one that's uh, going to hit as a tropical storm, it looks like, over the weekend. So everybody stay home, stay safe, and we're going to get started on what we're going to talk about this week. So I get asked a lot, um, especially in marriages that have you know, been in existence for a few years, um, about what, what's divided, divisible by the court in terms of salaries and, and retirement benefits. So basically any income from work is characterized as either separate or community property. Once again, community property is each spouse has an equal share or interest into those benefits or property and separate is only is, is owned by one spouse alone and the other one has no interest in those. And therefore, the courts can't award separate property to the other spouse unless there is an agreement between the spouses to do so. So current wages are determined by when they are earned, not when they are paid. And that's an important distinction. So let's say that you earned um, the income prior to getting married, but you weren't paid that income until after, that income would remain separate property. The same is true on the other end of the marriage relationship. If a, um, money is earned during the marriage, but not paid until after the divorce is final, that income is still community property and subject to division. Now there's some questions I get sometimes, which are what about future wages? And even though future wages may be based on current um, earning or based upon continued service, so it's building upon the time that was during the marriage, these are usually considered a contingency. Um, and that's separate property. And so the courts have repeatedly said that that's not going to be a divisible for future income. Bonuses are another aspect of uh, income that can be considered. And so a bonus has to be looked at based on when it was earned, not when it was paid. And they do make a distinction between bonuses that are sign signing bonuses and discretionary bonuses. So a discretionary bonus, an example is, you know, every year you get a Christmas bonus. That's not something the employer is required to pay. It's just a, something that they decide to do each year. And so we're you know, dividing those bonuses that have yet to be paid is, is hard to do. And um, that's going to be on a case by case situation based on the facts of the case. Um, but typically it's probably not going to be a community property just because it's hard to prove that there's going to be a entitlement to those bonuses. So the biggest one that we get asked a lot as, as family law and divorcing divorce attorneys um, is retirement benefits. Um, I know I personally try to avoid dividing retirement benefits as much as possible, just because there's a lot of work and um, hoops that you have to jump through in order to do that. And so if there's a better way of getting a division of property, other than dividing retirement, I definitely try to do that. Um, also, it's not an immediate benefit always, unless you want to take it out and you know, have to pay the penalties and interest on them. So in order to determine retirement benefits and the eligibility of each spouse, you, you got to, first, there's three questions that you need to answer. And that's one, is the benefit received by the employee considered a retirement benefit? Two, what type of retirement plan is the benefit? That's usually going to be a defined or a, def a defined benefit or a defined contribution plan. And three, has the benefit in the retire plan accrued? 
So a retirement plan is an earned property right that accrues through years of service or is a form of deferred compensation earned during each month of service. Other compensation not based on the years of service, such as discretionary payments, gifts, or gratuities are not considered a retirement benefit. Um, those, that have, you know, whether those are community or um, separate property is once again a fact basis. So retirement benefits are not fact basis. They either are retirement or they not, are not. There's three general types of retirement plans, which is a qualified plan, a non-qualified plan, and a government plan. So each plan has further uh, division of a defined benefit or a defined contribution. A defined benefit, the employer promises to pay a specific amount beginning at the age of retirement. So typically these are going to be your pension plans. And a defined contribution plan is what most people are probably thinking of when they hear a retirement plan. And those are where the employer makes a contribution, usually stock or money to an individual account that is in the employee's name. And there's this some mathematical formula that's used that I don't understand. And fortunately, I don't need to understand how they're deciding the um, contributions to that account. But these are going to be your 401 pay accounts, profit sharing plans, thrift plans, retirement saving plans, money purchase pension plans, uh, target benefit plans, and employee stock ownership plans. So then the third question that we talked about is, has the benefit in the retirement plan accrued? So what does that mean? So a benefit can either be in a status of accrued, vested, or matured. So benefit is accrued when the employee becomes eligible to participate in the employment retirement plan. That's usually going to be, you know, a certain number of months after they begin their employment. <clears throat> and then that's when the employee can start to accrue benefits. Now, when an employee accrues a benefit, it doesn't necessarily mean that the benefits are eligible to be paid out, but may be contingent on the employee's continued work. So this can be characterized as community or separate. And it just depends on when that was earned. Then we have invested benefit, and that's when the benefits become guaranteed. And it doesn't affect the characterization if it was characterized as community or separate when it was accrued. When it becomes vested, it doesn't change that characterization. And then we have matured benefits, which is when an employee actually reaches retirement age and has an unconditional right to start receiving the benefits. So how do we divide these benefits? Um, it's really easy when the number of years and the number of marriage years overlap. And so they're the same. So the, the time that you've worked and you accrued the benefits in the retirement plan, you've been married to the same person that whole time. Obviously, that means that the 100% of the funds in those retirement accounts are eligible to be divided between the spouses as community property. We have to apply some mathematic formulas on um, in cases where we have some benefits that were earned prior to marriage and then additional benefits earned during the marriage. So the portion that was earned during the marriage is community property and the portion that was earned prior to the marriage is separate property. And so we have, you know, depending on the type of plan, um, there's different formulas that we use to determine what those benefits are. Um, and it's for a uh, fully matured, um, it's going to also be dif different than um, one that is still in the, the vested or the accrued stage. So it's going to be um, it's usually number of months of the um, married portion over the total number of months, and that gives you a percentage of the, the benefits. Um, some plans will allow for what we call post-divorce benefits. That's usually going to be your cost of living adjustments. And so the, the portions of each spouse's um, benefit that they receive can be increased by cost of living. Um, <clears throat> There's also a difference between uh, federal and non-federal. So what I was just talking about is applicable more to the non-federal retirement. Federal benefits, um, 
So we have civil service benefits, and that's going to be really common around here, our NASA employees. And they have retirement benefits, and it depends on when they started work, which one they're under, whether it's the civil service retirement system or the federal employees retirement system. And they call that CSRS or, F or FERS, F-E-R-S. Um, and at age 62, they're going to get a retirement annuity. And there is also a possibility for a survivor annuity. Now, what's important for spouses to know is that the survivor annuity has to be actively waived. Um, and if it's not waived and they decide to do a survivor annuity for the spouse, then the retirement amount they receive under the retirement annuity is reduced to cover the survivor annuity. They also have a thrift savings plan, which is a defined contribution plan similar to 401k. Um, they also have disability retirement benefits and life insurance benefits. These are all things that need to be taken into consideration upon um, divorcing for anybody that works for the government. We also have military benefits, which are um, a little more complicated. Um, most of those, the magic year is 20. They need 20 years of service. There's some um, different plans that you might be looking at. And so that's going to be another case-by-case -case basis. And it's really a lot more than uh, can be covered quickly in, in this Facebook live session. Um, and there's, there's different retirement systems. In 2018, the military went to a blended retirement system from their what they call their legacy retirement system. And it's a blended um, where they're going to get an annuity after 20 years of service and they get a, a thrift savings plan, which is a defined contribution plan. Um, and so that's something relatively new. And if you've been in service prior to, let me see what that date, January 1st of 2018, you're on the legacy system and you have the ability to convert to the blended system. Um, one thing to note about military benefits when you are dividing them is um, the military personnel has the right to convert retirement to disability. And for the, 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 the spouse, that, that means that their benefits in the retirement are reduced by the amount that's converted to disability. Disability payments are not subject to division Typically, um, they can do an agreement, which the courts will honor. Um, but for the most part, benefits under disability are not divisible. And um, it's something to consider as an attorney representing uh, individuals where one or both are in the military is to really make sure that those are ironed out so that we don't have the problem that um, many um, former spouses were facing. Um, they got you know, a pretty good vision of the retirement benefits, but then the military spouse was able to convert 100% of that to disability, and then the uh, ex-spouse was basically out of luck because they didn't have uh, retirement benefits anymore that were eligible to eligible to be divided between the spouses upon divorce. Um, and so there's there's all kinds of benefits out there um, for the military. Um, most of our cases are going to fall under the non-federal divisions, which are a little easier, but still, if there's any other way to make up the difference in what you would receive in their spouse's retirement, I would highly suggest dividing other assets before dividing uh, any kind of retirement benefits, just because of, you know, there's a delayed receipt unless you want to pay penalties. Um, and you have to go through what we call the whole quadro process. The quadro, quadro is a qualified domestic relations order. And it's what we have to file and get signed by the court. And then we have to get the plan administrator for the retirement plan to approve. And so it's, it's a lot of effort and a lot of extra cost. And so if there's any way to avoid it, it's my personal preference to do so. But it's, it's you know, something that most attorneys have experience with. 
and are fully capable of doing that. Um, so that's pretty much the, the quick down and dirty on retirement plans and income. Um, if you want any more information on this, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can reach me at my email, which is Duana, D-U-A-N-A, at BoswellTexasLaw.com. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any of those questions that you may have, or you can message me on Facebook um, anytime, and I will get back to you. So anyway, I just want to thank you for joining me, and once again, be safe this weekend, and hopefully we don't get too much rain, but we get enough that we need. Anyway, I'll see you next week at the same time. Bye for now.